What's up everybody, it's your boy David. Got a fairly simple build this video, but it's also an excellent opportunity for me to showcase a few of my favorite tricks for dry brushing and adding detail to miniatures. So let's get right into it. These pillars are going to be made very similarly to how Black Magic Craft did his. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. Basically, cut squares of your desired size from foam core. I'm doing two inch squares for the top and bottom sections and one and a half inch squares for the center of my pillar. Mark off an area on the side about a half inch in and either cut or file a groove along that line. I'm doing a bunch of these squares together in bulk and using a metal ruler to cut the groove in. None of this needs to be incredibly precise because these aren't going to need to fit together like dungeon tiles. So a little bit of randomness here is gonna help make them look a bit more natural. To texture the foam, use some balled up foil and roll it over the sides. You don't need to texture the top and bottom of most of the pieces, except for the ones that we'll be showing at the end. Make sure you also get the corners and edges of the squares to round them out slightly. Then just take the squares and glue them to each other until you reach your desired size. I did two layers each on the top and bottom, and then six of the smaller squares in the center. Then texture out your topmost layers, and finish attaching everything together. I also pushed a screw in from the bottom of my pillars with a bit of glue to help add some weight and keep them centered with each other while the glue was drying. The statues on top are from a pack of fantasy soldiers I got online. These knights come from a Russian company, and they stand about two inches tall, Perfect for this project. Trim off any flash, which is a bit of pain with these because of how soft the plastic is. And then rough up all the flat surfaces with a wire bristle brush. This is going to add a bit of texture for the statues to help make them look a little bit less smooth. For painting, I decided to do the statues separate from the pillars, so I glued them onto some unused board game counters to act as a base to hold them with. Then, you know what time it is. Black magic base coat over everything and go ahead and stipple on some to add a bit more texture on those flat areas again. I'm going to be using a handful of paints for this next step. This is more than you need to to get a stone texture, but I like adding in a little bit of extra color variation. Also, instead of using black and brown miniature inks, you can opt for watered-down artist inks as well. Our first step of painting is going to be base coating everything in a medium gray. After that, add some variety to your base coat with some reds and browns of your choosing. Next, we're going to highlight everything with a very light gray dry brush. This starts to bring out the detail, but also starts bringing together some of those disparate base colors. Again, you can also stipple on parts while you're dry brushing to further accentuate textures. Aside from the semi-random base coating, one of my favorite tricks to add more depth of color is to apply uneven coats of black and or brown ink. Depending on where this ink goes and what it's layered on top of, you can have quite a depth of color. Either apply it to specific sections, like individual stones, or haphazardly over sections of the whole piece. Another good trick to practice on this project is recess shading. Painting some of the washes down directly into the cracks and crevices via capillary action. Since we're going to be highlighting again after this step, it'll be easy to hide any excess ink that spills over from the crevices. Then, to make the pieces look more cohesive, my favorite trick is to build your highlights back up, starting with a dry brush of your base coat color. This helps blend together the various colors you've used on the project so far. After you blend some of the harsher edges together with the base coat color, do another dry brush of your highlight color, mostly focusing on raised edges. To add a bit of final variation to your highlights, pull out a slightly warmer tone paint, like a peach flesh tone, and highlight a few areas with that as well. To finish assembling your statues, go ahead and drill holes into their feet. Normally I would use sections of paper clip to stick them in, but the closest thing I had on hand was some small finishing nails, which work fine too as long as you trim the head of the nail off. Put some glue on the posts and stick them into the pillars. For a bit more detail, I decided to add some vegetation and dirt to the statues. This sheet of vines is quite handy for this sort of thing, though the pieces are very dry and brittle, so don't try to bend them very far. After gluing the vegetation on, add some flocking on areas where it seems appropriate, and then dust the flocking in the plants with some festive seasonal dry pigments. Once everything is put together and painted, I like to take one last look over the piece and decide if I need to make any final adjustments. 
This time, I decided to add a small amount of a very light brown ink, just to bring out the details in a few key areas. And that's it for today's build, folks. Stay safe, sane, and crafty out there, and I'll see you in the next video.